Hi friends, David here from Learn Stage Lighting, and we've been talking about lasers a fair amount lately, and today I want to dive in a little deeper with this guy. The X-Laser Skyrider HPX M2. Uh, and this is a sort of part review, sort of part tutorial, like, I mean, pretty much all our reviews, right? Where I want to show you how this laser works, how it ticks, how it, how it thinks, so that you can really begin to understand how it could work in your workflow of lighting. In terms of review, most of it would be on the functionality anyways, right? So you can count it as both. So the basic gist is, this is the X-Laser Skyrider M2. It's a small laser um, that actually has 2 watts of power, which in lasers is enough for venues of about 500 people. Um, it has a nice yoke bracket, comes with power cable, safety cable, uh, some instructions, your keys, all of that. Now, I've got it wired up. Um, you can do DMX or SACN or ArtNet. You also need to hook up your safety switch. So this is my emergency stop here, um, ether stop pendant. In the case of the M2s, that is an add-on but you only need one per laser system. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna power on my laser. I've got my front gate closed, okay. Um, notice, really good build quality overall. Um, they machine these parts in house, it's pretty cool. Fan noise is a little loud to the sides um, and to the bottom. Um, so do be aware of that, it's not crazy, but I'm sure you can hear it. I've got both my keys turned on, my safety unlocked. And once the startup is done, I can hit my reset switch, at which point we're blinking so that we're counting down until laser emission will happen. I'm also getting a blink on the front emission LED of the laser itself. And now we're good to go. The laser's on. Okay. Um, I've still got the laser aperture closed, and I like to do that until uh, I'm a little further along in the process. I'll just open it up just a little bit. but. You've always got to make sure when you're firing your laser that you close your aperture or use beam block tape to help with your safety zones. Um, and this is where mercury starts to come in and why I really want to give you guys a guide to mercury, at least the basics, here in this video. So essentially, uh, here in the console, we're in the Onyx NX1. When you patch mercury, you have two sections. You have your master fixture, which I've got here. And then you have your builders, okay? This is a builder, and I actually have four builders patched, though I have the fixture, um, the laser itself currently, in two builder mode. What do these mean? Okay, apologize for my ugly cables. Uh, so, a master is what it sounds like. It's a main fixture, it's things that apply to the whole fixture. The builders are then individual layers, per se, of the fixture, okay? So I can have different things set up, a lot like a video switcher, on different layers of my builders, on different builders. And then I can combine or switch between them at will very rapidly. Okay, it's instant. Let's take a look at how this works. So first of all, with my master, uh, the first things that I have is I basically can go ahead and what I like to do to start up and build this into a queue at the start of my day is I like to go ahead and bring up one of the gobos so down at the bottom of the gobos i believe are my optimized test patterns and i can turn those on now notice still no laser coming out because i need to turn up the intensity and go to my master turn on the fixture itself so builders enabled then I'm able to go ahead and actually turn my fixture on. All right. And then now I actually have some laser coming out of the aperture. And I'm going to open it up just a little bit more for you. Okay. It's always important to be careful when opening it up. And it's super stroby here. Um, I don't have another camera that way for you to see. Uh, and it's super stroby here. I don't have a camera for you to see the other way uh, right now. Um, but I can see the pattern, I can see that it's not hitting my camera, etc. So I can open that up just a little bit more, again, making sure you're not getting in anybody's eyes, not getting into cameras. And now I can begin to size my laser. 
So that happens in the Mercury Master Channels. That's why we like to use the Master and the Builders, okay? So here in Pan Tilt, I can take the whole fixture now, the whole laser beam, and I can adjust it. So here, I'm adjusting it up, and I'm sure we'll have the, the second camera on the screen here. I'm adjusting it down, right? Same with side to side. I have some adjustment, okay? Uh, besides that, we also have scale, uh, which I have under beam here. So 0% DMX on this channel is 100% size. And you can also flip it to negative 100%. So here, I'm making it tighter, and you can probably see that. And here I'm making it tighter on the y-axis. Okay, so depending on your venue, depending on what the constraints of that day are, you may end up with a square output going into a ceiling a lot, but it may end up tighter, and that's okay. Um, but taking your master building with that first and a test pattern basically enables you to now go ahead and clear that test pattern. Okay, so I could just go ahead and clear that. And now we're ready to go. Okay, um, then I can go ahead and turn my intensity down, for example. And now I could start building my actual cues. Okay, so let's do that real quick. So let's just do, I'll just do a quick startup cue. And so that cue basically takes my Mercury Master, you know, gets it sized for today's venue, gets it up, um, gets it enabled, all that goodness. Okay, so now it's ready to go. So now I'm ready to actually build with my different builders inside of Mercury. And this is where the fun begins. Before that, it's kind of, you know, compliance and safety, right? Um, so a good thing to do just to start is to go ahead and bring up your intensity. Now, the default gobo in Mercury is a circle. That's the default pattern. And that's great. Do be careful. If your lighting console um, happens to uh, zero out at 0% size, you'll end up with a dot from your laser. Okay? If you have a non-moving dot from this 2-watt laser, you can, put a you can burn circles into things, uh, those little dots, pretty quickly. Okay? So always be careful with lasers. It's, they're cool, but it's also serious. Okay? So in my first builder, there's a couple things to be aware of. So I've got my intensity control, just dial that up. Then I'll go to my gobos, okay? So they're basically on the two gobo channels. Channel two, uh, there's a page channel, which by default just circles, and then there's gobos within each, each of those. So when you change the, um, you change the page, you get a whole new set of gobos. And it's worth noting as well that um, in Onyx, as of right now at least, we're still using an old profile that you can download from Xlaser and install into a show file. Um, the new profile system that came out in Onyx 4.6 does not yet work well with the Mercury lasers. There's some limitations there. They know about it. Um, but this profile that I'm using here works great. So the first thing you can do basically is find you know, a gobo that you look, you start going through things, you say, okay, you know, here are things that I like, right? And and you can go ahead and find those. I'm just going to go back to lines because they're simple, they're easy. Then I can scroll through and find a line that I like. We're just going to go simple. Awesome. Next, we're going to go ahead and actually start to morph this, actually start to, to make some interesting pattern with it. Okay, so while we're here, we'll just go ahead. I'm just going to turn down the intensity a little bit so I don't burn anything on the other side of my, my office. Um, and what we're going to do then is go to color. So color is interesting. So we've got our gobo default is first. So I can pop my intensity back up so you can see a little better. Okay. And so all of these gobos have a color to them. And you can leave them in that default color if you want, right? And then as you switch between gobos, you get different colors. Okay, that's kind of interesting, right? Um, but 
there's so much more to the color channel inside of Mercury. So the two Mercury basic builder parts are two colors. So you have the basic builder and then you have two color sections of that, kind of like an LED fixture with different pixels, right? We, we know that there's plenty of LED fixtures, different pixels on the lens, you can have multiple colors. This is similar, but better. Okay, so if I go in here then, and I make one of my colors like a magenta, and I'll make my other color yellow. Okay, so far nothing's happened on my laser. But if I go back to my builder, and then I go here between these different options, I can get first option. It's called overall. You see there? It set the first color as the whole laser. But then we get into different color combinations like these linear pre's. This is a hard one. And I like the soft ones a lot where we actually start fading uh, in between the, the two colors. So it's not just a hard change between the two, which I absolutely love, right? Um, so stinking cool, okay? Um, next, we can start to add prisms, okay? So just like a light, you can have prisms. But unlike a light, you know, I don't know a single light that has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve different prisms. Do you know any lights with 12 prisms? No, you don't. <laughs> um, and so that's something that makes these unique is you have all these different prism looks here that you're able to get and they're all unique. They all look different. They all have different things. Okay. And so, and so that's a great way to look at it as well. It, not only that, but then we take it a little further. Um, our prism, say I put in a linear prism, actually has modifiers to it. So, of course, I can index it just like any prism. I can make it rotate, um, what have you. You know, that's all fine, fine and good, right? So I can get it rotating a little. Oh, but I'm stuck in. No, for some reason didn't want to move very fast. Oh, that's index. I want it moving just a little. Something seems a little bit off in this channel right now. It's okay. Um, but regardless, they supposedly can move. They definitely indexes. Um, regardless, so our prisms can move. Okay. Uh, but we can also adjust the spread. So now, I'm literally in here adjusting how the prism spreads across the space. So now I'm like, I'm actually here morphing this prism. And you can see the light anime right and this is something that you know no moving light can do but yet something that's the cost of a moving light here is kind of kind of replacing multiple lights okay same on the on the y so i can spread them vertically uh for those that have vertical aspects to them super cool okay then i love this the effects so then it, this is like an effects wheel where i can literally go ahead and and start to get some motion to it. So you see here, I've got different effects motions, and then I've got speed and size. So if we do like a medium sine wave, now all of my lines just bent, okay, in my shape, okay? Um, and I'm actually just gonna take this and bring it down just a little bit for you guys. So it's a little more clear what's going on, right? So we've got that, awesome, the shape is kind of bending, then I can adjust the speed, right? I can make it slower, I can make it faster. Okay, so now it's like a rotating gobo, then I can adjust how much it moves, and so it's actually making the design wave. You know, it's kind of, it's a different type of animation than you can get with a light, and I think that's what makes this system really cool. Not only that, but as mentioned, so say I go ahead and clear my intensity real quick. Gotta remember where my keys are. Now, say I've got intensity on a fader here, and then I'm just gonna go, actually, I've got some examples here where 
I've got some different builders. So here's like a green one. Here's my intensity one. And you see, I could just pop between different faders. I've got these both saved into my queue, what have you, you know, and I can go between them and, and have these different looks totally on command, right? Totally flash them to the beat of the music. And yet it's a single laser, you know, about the cost again of a moving light or two that really can take the function of multiple moving headlights. Okay. Um, and so as you can see, I'm a little bit wide here. So if I narrowed it, it would get a little less stroby. Um, in person, it looks great on camera, a hair stroby. But I hope this helps you guys to kind of see what these lasers can do because there's a lot they can do and a lot under the hood and it's a little bit technical but i know once you learn it because we've had customers before do this that once you learn it once you get into it i think you're gonna find that you really like setting up um this lightweight <laughs> easy to use little laser that that comes in a small plastic case that is easy to set up but has a lot of ability to it if that sounds interesting, you want to check out more, then hey, we've got more here on Learn Stage Lighting Gear. Uh, we can definitely help you out. More videos here, more on the main channel. And if you have any questions about lasers, if you're thinking about getting one, don't hesitate to reach out to us, gear at learnstagelighting.com and learnstagelightinggear.com. We are your source for all things stage lighting, lasers, audio, video, LED walls. We want to help you. I hope you have a great day, and we'll see you guys in our next video. Thanks.